Welcome to this FSC Digital Help Guide to Teaching Student T-Test. The Student's T-Test Analysis is used to test for the difference between two sets of measured data. So here we have an example of a common grassland plant, ribwort plantain, where we've measured leaf length in trampled and non-trampled areas of grassland. And you can see in the table the measurements that we've received in millimetres. Before we calculate any statistical test, we need to set some hypotheses. We use both a null and an alternative hypothesis. This is because in science and maths, it's really hard to prove that something is true or that a relationship or difference exists. So we start by assuming that there's no difference or relationship and then try to collect evidence to reject this statement, leaving ourselves no alternative but to accept the alternative option. So in this example, our null hypothesis is going to say that there's no difference between the two data sets. So you can see here that we've written there will be no statistically significant difference between the mean ribwort plantain leaf length in trampled and non-trampled areas. The alternative hypothesis is going to be very similar, but instead of saying no, we're going to say there will be a statistically significant difference. This means that if our um, t-test allows us to reject our null hypotheses, then we have to accept that there is a statistically significant difference between the two data sets. Essentially, what a student's t-test does is to test the significance of any difference between the means of the two data sets. But it does this at looking at the overlap between the two data sets. The greater the overlap, the less likely any difference in the means is to be statistically significant when you take into account the whole data set. The smallest overlap means that any difference in the means is much more likely to be a statistically significant difference. To calculate our t-test value, we need to know both the mean and the standard deviation for both data sets. This equation allows you to calculate standard deviation, but it is also easily calculated using a calculator. We have the means and the standard deviation in the table already done for you. So now we can look at the t-test equation. Everything we need, we already have we can just implement this into the equation. Looking at the t-test equation then, we've got our mean for our trampled and our non-trampled site. So if we call trampled site one and non-trampled site two, we know that we have got already the mean of site one, denoted here as x bar one, and the mean of site two. So we've got the mean of site 1 is 93.98 and the mean of site 2 is 52.35. We also know the standard deviation. So we've got the standard deviation of site 1 um, and the standard deviation of site 2. You can see here that I've calculated the difference between the means. So 93.98 minus 52.35 gives us 37.63. This is the difference between the means, and this is the top line of our equation. You can see here then that we've added n. So n for site 1 is 10, and n for site 2 is 10. This is because n is just the number of measurements in each sample. The student's t-test, though, doesn't need to have the same number in each sample. So those numbers could be different depending on how many measurements you had for each data set. Here we've got the standard deviation and we've squared it. So we're just building up the information at the bottom of our equation now. So we've squared the standard deviation of site one and that of site two. And the next step, really simple, is we're going to divide the squared standard deviation by the n value. So for the trampled site, it's going to be 292.42 divided by 10. And for the non-trampled site, 18.95 divided by 10. OK, so you can see that I've done some rounding there um, just to keep in line with the, the decimal places. It's good to have the same number of decimal places 
um, in each of the steps of the calculation. Um, obviously, if you're doing the whole thing on a calculator, then it will round it slightly different. So just be aware of that if you're doing it differently in class. The next step then is to add those two values together. So as you can see in the center of our equation, we're just adding those two values together um, and that will give you a total um, for the bottom half of the equation. So nice and simple then, adding those two together gives us 31.14. And then the next step is just to square root that answer to complete the bottom half of our equation. OK, so we've now got the square root um, of the sum of standard deviation squared divided by n. Um, so that is the whole of the bottom half of our equation. So we're now going to divide the difference between the means by that um, square root of the sum of standard deviation divided by n. So we've just got two simple numbers, one divided by the other. OK, so 37.63 divided by 5.58 should give us 6.74. And that's our calculated T value um, for the student's T test. So this is the value that we're then going to compare to a critical value in order to see whether it's significant or not. In order to do that, we need to know something called degrees of freedom. And the degrees of freedom, this is a value to describe the amount of data you have and the, therefore the amount of possible error that could come into our um, equation. So in this case, for student t-test, the degrees of freedom is n1 minus 1 plus n2 minus 1. So we had n1 is 10 and n2 is 10. So we're realistically looking at 9 plus 9, which gives us a degrees of freedom of 18. Critical values then, critical values are base levels. So the lowest value that you could get from your t-test and still have statistically significant data, still be able to reject that null hypothesis. So if we look up our degrees of freedom, which we said were 18, uh, then if we check the 5% significance level, so the one that says P equals 0.05, um, then we have a critical value of 2.10. So our T value of 6.74 is higher than the critical value at the 5% level, which is 2.10. So then we can reject our null hypothesis as there is less than 5% probability of this difference being due to chance. However, we've beaten it by quite a lot, so we can then go on to look at the 1% level. So the 1% level has a critical value of 2.88, which we can also beat. Um, so even though we've already rejected the null hypothesis, uh, we can now say that there is um, an even higher confidence in that value uh, because there is a less than 1% or probability of 1% um, that the difference is due to chance. So we can accept our alternative hypothesis saying that there is a statistically significant difference. So hopefully that's helped to increase your confidence in teaching students t-test. Um, do share with your students and for more information on stats, uh, and how it can be used, do go to the Biology Fieldwork website and click on the stats page.